The next case we're going to discuss is Milliken versus Meyer, and in your outline we're talking about the issue of the subject of domicile. And the first question is a very straightforward question. What was the nature of this dispute? And the answer would go something like this. The controversy is about 164th interest in profits from operation of certain Colorado oil properties. Now here, we're, you know, you have an understanding here. We're talking about uh, property that's in a particular state and uh, it's obviously been divided into many little pieces. Uh, Transcontinental on August 31st, 1922, contracted to pay Meyer 4 64ths of those profits. Milliken asserted a claim to two-thirds interest in that 4 64th share. As a settlement of that dispute, Transcontinental on May 3rd, 1924, contracted to pay Milliken a 2 64th interest, and Milliken assigned to Transcontinental all his claims against Meyer pertaining to the lands in question and to Meyer's 4 64th interest in the profits. Now that's a general overview of what the, the language is in the, your case book. And as I said previously, your responsibility when you're doing your, your review for your homework, when you're reading your case materials at home, is to find these, this language. That's why you know, I, 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 we're going through this process. The core of the classroom experience is to be able to, to, to read the cases and to identify those portions of the case that are most significant, and, and, and that's where we go through this exercise. Next question, what was the significance of the domicile of the parties? And what did the court say? In 1935, the respondent instituted this suit in the Colorado court praying inter alia, which means among other things, for a judgment against Milliken for the sums withheld under the Wyoming judgment and paid to Milliken for an injunction against Milken attempting to enforce the Wyoming judgment and for a decree that the Wyoming judgment was a nullity for want of jurisdiction over Meyer or his property. When you are going through your case book, when you're reading cases, one of the important things for you to do is to review as to where you are in the case book to understand why a particular case is in the section where it has been placed. And in this case, we're talking about domicile. And we're in the subject matter, we're talking about jurisdiction. So it is important for you to read the case and ask yourself, as you're reading the case, what, what does this have to do with domicile? The bill alleged inter alia that Meyer, at the time of service in the Wyoming court, had long ceased to be a resident of Wyoming and was a resident of Colorado, that the service obtained on him did not give the Wyoming court jurisdiction of his person or property, and that such judgment was violative of the due process clause of the 14th Amendment. Milliken's answer alleged inter alia that Meyer was a resident of Wyoming at the time of the Wyoming act action and that the Wyoming judgment was entitled to full faith and credit in Colorado under the federal constitution. Article 4, Section 1. The Colorado court on issues joined found that Meyer was domiciled in Wyoming when the Wyoming suit was commenced, that the Wyoming statutes for sub substituted service were constitutional, that the affidavit for constructive service of Meyer was filed in good faith, substantially conformed to the Wyoming statute and stated the truth, that Wyoming had jurisdiction over the person of Meyer, that the Wyoming decree was not void, and that the bill should be dismissed. What was the court's view of a state's power over a person based upon the person's domicile within the state? And here's what the court said. In our view, the machinery employed met all the requirements of due process. Certainly then, Meyer's domicile in Wyoming was a sufficient basis for that extraterritorial service. As in the case of the authority of the United States over its absent citizens, 
the authority of a state over one of its citizens is not terminated by the mere fact of his absence from the state. The state, which accords him privileges and affords protection to him and his property by virtue of his domicile, may also exact reciprocal duties. Enjoyment of the privileges of residence within the state and the attendant right to invoke the protection of his laws are inseparable from the various incidences of state citizenship. The responsibilities of that citizenship arise out of the relationship to the state where domicile, which, which domicile creates. That relationship is not dissolved by mere absence from the state. The attendant duties, like the rights and privileges incident to domicile, are not dependent on a continuous presence in the state. One such incidence of domicile is amenability to suit within the state, even during sojourns without the state. That means even when you're traveling you know, from your state, you are still subject to its jurisdiction. Where the state has provided and employed a reasonable method, a reasonable method for apprising such a, an absent party of the proceedings against him. In other words, the court is saying each state provides to its residents the people who are domiciled there, rights and privileges. And when you travel outside of the state, the state still has the power to uh, have, has, still has authority over its persons, uh, citizens who are domiciled in that state. 